Hello and welcome back to another episode of uh, Minion J defending himself. Actually, um, I was going to start this episode with actually how we got broken into last night and had all my stock stolen. Um, however, I woke up and that was actually a dream. So <laughs> you have one of those uh, dreams that is just really vivid. Um, I could have swore I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, walked out, back door was open, my computer was gone and all the different things and I actually was planning in my head actually making a topic about having all this stock stolen so if you have had that happen before or you know what you would do in that situation let me know in the comment section below because we do have insurance <laughs> and appropriate insurance at that but like i said i was hyperventilating for a bit so it's not about what we're talking about today but off the back of last week's episode I actually had a, um, a comment bounce up um, from a gentleman named david so basically he said the last week was really bad advice uh, 11,000 last month on eBay with books. Uh, so we'll basically, we'll we'll look at uh, what David's basically saying and we'll break it down and we'll go from that way. So most are stored under the bed and in wardrobes, in sealed tubs, rest in our garage, 11,000 listings. Don't listen to Octo on a Shopify store. Save your money. You'll only waste $1,000 plus banging your head on a brick wall. So that that's right. I've said numerous times, don't listen to me and especially don't listen to the octopus. But what um i suppose what made me a little bit uh agitated and if you had watched the podcast in a couple of days in the future is that i don't i don't mind people questioning me and by all means like i said you know you need to hold people accountable especially those ones you re watch on ebay um reselling and any any facets of youtube for that for, for that matter um however what really 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 annoyed me by that comment was actually that i had to go back and watch that horrible video that i put out last week so i will link it in here somewhere if you do haven't seen it already go back let me know if my interpretation uh for what we talk about in this video is correct or if david's interpretation is correct um i was quite sick last week as you probably <laughs> if you've already seen the, the video you're probably already aware um however I went back and watched the video, all 17 minutes of it, you know, painstakingly. And the reason why I don't edit these videos, I hate the sound of my own voice. So, it's like, you know, contrary to what probably Grumpy or anything, but I really, really, really hate editing because, like I said, I hate listening to the sound of my own voice. Uh, and to make matters worse, I've actually lost my AirPods. I, I can't find them. Um, find my thing on the Apple is not really helping in that capacity. So, I'm having a pretty rough day all around here. But getting back to what David was saying is that really bad advice. I listened to the episode again, and it's probably a bit biased from my perspective. I didn't think I said anything really controversial for once. Like, I, I don't think I pissed anyone off, and it wasn't my intention to piss someone off. Um, although I did piss someone off, actually. So scrap that. Uh, but hopefully not David. So there's a couple of, pin, you know, junctures at where I think David may have, you know, walked away with a bad advice piece. Uh Numero uno was probably when I said don't sell books. Uh, that's primarily from my perspective, which I said numerous times in that video. Uh, I'm not basically telling you how to run your business. And the big thing that contradicts what David has said in that comment, uh, and if you have, are watching David, please elaborate on what you're saying because I really, you, you've got four sentences going on there in isolation of each other. I really don't know what you're trying to say. So hopefully I'm answering it correctly. Um, where I've said numerous times, it's your business. You need to run it as such. I think that's really good advice. Like, <laughs> So I don't know if that's bad advice. Maybe David wants you to run your business as to what other people want you to run your business. I don't know. Um, and what it really comes down to, and, and like I said, you know, in my, on my deathbed last week, is that it's your business. You need to run it like you, you, know, like you want to. Uh, you really need to do your own research. Don't go buying things or don't go listing things or don't go procuring things that YouTubers, especially such as myself and everyone else out there, are telling you to buy what bolos they are. Uh, there was a video come out earlier in the week uh, regarding bolos um, from another YouTuber. They did say that once a bolo's out, it kind of, you know, if you're new to reselling in that space, you're probably going to financially ruin yourself because if you go and procure an item such as, you know, Gusta books, for example, because you hear they sell well, um, you spend a lot of money on that. You find out the market's flooded. You can't sell them. You potentially have to clear them out at ten cents on the dollar you bought them for. And therefore, you're losing money, especially if you put a lot of money in these different things. So hopefully, that wasn't the bad advice that was given. Um, and also the books. I know it was probably the books we was getting referring to. But what what I do have a pinpoint with with what David said here. He's basically said he's sold eleven thousand dollars last month on eBay with books. 
if I'm going to be brutally honest, David, I've stalked your store and I don't think that's correct. Um, I won't disclose it. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not going to pinpoint um, and make it, a, a, you know, <laughs> a point of otherwise. But, um, you know, I, I do see you sell a lot of low product items, you know, probably about that 15 to $20 price point with free postage. So you're at the very least, you're walking away with 7 or $8 per book um, or a bundle in that sense. So realistically, you might need to show me your statistics as to how you got to $11,000 last month on eBay. Um, with myself, I've been showing my Flipwise com content and I did talk on Friday night and also talked in the podcast that comes out in a couple of days in the future is that what you see is a 90 day total or a 30 day total, whatever, you, whatever metric you're using in this respect, doesn't necessarily transfer to what your actual profit margin is. And I know he's probably talking about his yeah, he's basically sales of eleven thousand dollars worth of books, but to me that means nothing. Like, yeah, realistically, and, I, and I've made a point on on Friday night in the live, um, and also on the podcast is it on Wednesday, I think it was. It was I actually I uh, did about six hundred dollars in sales, but when I came across the Flipwise because I had eBay accounts, VAT tax, they count, you know, international shipping, they count all the different things. So once that all got stripped out of it, money that I, I would never see, um, it basically came down to $157 or something along the lines of that for that particular day. So from, you know, almost $550, $560 to $160, that's quite the discrepancy. And if you look at that across from $11,000 and Having sold books previously, I have promoted them about 10 to 15%. So, you know, I'm not saying what, what David is um, <laughs> basically promoting his at. However, to be competitive in that market, you probably do need to promote. You probably do need to have um, books that are in, in, in vogue or highly sought after and all these different things. So I suppose for complete transparency, um, I went out thrifting yesterday or op shopping, whatever you want to talk about it. Uh, so I went to the church op shop. Um, then I went to Salvo's after that. So basically picked up some Goosebumps books. Uh, these ones here, they're just generic Goosebump, Goosebump books uh, picked up for a dollar each. The two here are the later ones and probably the ones that you probably want to be looking for. Because like I said, well, hopefully this is not bad advice, but I kind of want to give you little tidbits of information. Um, like I said, do your own research, but if I can provide some stuff to look out for um you know a bolo and sense that i probably just said in that respect you probably want to be looking at the very minimum for the later episodes of the well, later books in the goosebumps line uh this one here haunted high school i think i listed that one for about 45 dollars. it's a first edition uh it's a pretty good nick actually um and werewolf skin to my knowledge and from my research as well this one actually never got a reprint um it's a first edition australian or might be a first edition american i can't remember i've listed it already you can all go have a look yourselves you know the store um but what makes this a little bit more worthwhile um it's actually got here we go <laughs> here we're prepared earlier it's actually got the original mask in there so the mask is in really good nick so that's something you want to be keeping an eye out for um yeah so basically all those different things so that's something i've recorded on the weekend so Went out yesterday, probably the best part of all morning, um, and came back with that bundle and a couple of extra games. So thrifting is becoming more and more complicated. So I spoke to my local Salvation Army, which I've mentioned in numerous videos earlier on. Um, absolutely loved them because of their pricing structure, the way that the store was set out, how nice the, the volunteers were and all these different things. Bit of a, <laughs> a salvo suck in that respect. But uh, the gentleman there was telling me on the weekend when I went in there yesterday is that the headquarters went through there on the week and basically dictated to them how they need to change their store and what their new pricing model is. So previously, Goosebumps and Kids Books, for example, were four for a dollar. Now they're a dollar each, which is not groundbreaking in, the, in itself. Um, however, you know, 12 to 24 months time, they might be two or three dollars a book. So they're obviously working their way up. So I did pick up some Fear Street as well. Um, some obviously some Goosebumps, some Warhammer's books. So always have a look, always make sure you research Warhammer books. This particular one, which I did talk about on the podcast, it was $20. Uh, comes for about that $150 to $200. So definitely, definitely, definitely don't be turned off by pricing. Um, do your research. And hopefully that's not bad advice. <laughs> and where else are we going? Um, before we finish up this episode, don't listen to Octo on a Shopify store, save you money. You'll only waste the thousand dollars plus dollars banging your head against brick wall. That's correct. Yeah. So basically, what he's getting at, um, I did draw the correlation behind that remark. I did mention in the episode last week that, um, you know, if I was to 
create a Shopify store, not that I tell you to create a Shopify store and please don't take what I'm looking at doing for my business as to what you should be doing for your business as a progression. However, I will caveat that. And I did mention in the podcast is that you need to stay away from the mindset that you should only sell on one platform. Um, you should only be very regulated in this sense. So be very mindful. You need to start thinking outwards. At the start, it doesn't matter. Um, but once you start gaining momentum, don't limit yourself because obviously you're at the whims of one 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 store, one platform, and all those different things. So if they don't fancy you anymore, they could potentially kick you out like you know, Blake with Depop. Uh, but then you've lost one source of income. So I would suggest, and hopefully this is not bad advice, is that stabilize um, your store in the sense of eBay. If, if you want to pursue eBay first, then start looking at subsequential streams of income. Um, and like I said, do your own research in respect to that. But as to the Shopify comment, I did mention that if I can net a very strong uh, supply chain of these Skylanders, I would create my own Skylander store not that I told you to do one. And this is hypothetical. I would probably call it octoskylands.com.au or .com, something along that. And what I would do, I don't have a business card at the moment, so you have to deal with my time zone card, is when I sold this, this character, I would put my little business card in there, then basically you know, redirect them to that Shopify store. So what, um, what David, <laughs> I was getting mixed up with uh, Graham, I was doing that earlier as well, because what David was saying is you, you, you visit a big outlay for Shopify, but realistically, I've had a Shopify store account before, which basically I've brand Lego out of, um, He's right in the sense that you probably need to advertise it. However, I'm trying to streamline it so it's organic because I've got a lot of customer base from Australia. I've got a lot of customer base from the US uh, and Canada for these guys. So basically, I would put that little um, business card. And yes, I know it is against eBay's terms and conditions. However, like I said that last week, a lot of companies that I deal with and a lot of companies that I source through, through eBay, they actually put their own business cards in. So realistically, it's something... You know, that I can't condone, but you can't read between the picture in that respect, right? Then I would redirect them to that website. And out of 100 business cards, like maybe it might have a, a sell through rate or, you know, a click through rate of two or three um, percent of that. So, but realistically, you're doing that organically. You're, you know, if you keep on top of inventory management, you can work out between the two. And idealistically, that's another source of income that you can run on the side and build, you know, a mailing list, which is invaluable by itself. You can start sending newsletters out, all these different things, and, you know, and corner that Skylander market. So going back to my original point <laughs> as to what David was saying is that don't listen to read to selling YouTubers, don't listen to YouTubers in general. Basically, do your own research, especially when it comes to finance and business and all those different things. Um, don't listen to people in the comment section either when they um, spruik that they've got about $10,000, $11,000 uh, a month in sales in the sense that it's unquantifiable data. At no point did David provide me evidence to say one way or another. So I was originally going to let the comments slide, just reply back to him, say, hey, look, yep, cool. we're going to agree to disagree. However, when he almost yeah, did what he's accusing me of, <laughs> not being completely um, sincere or being giving bad advice, which in, in itself, because you could link around in the sense that by saying he's got 11,000 listings and he's done $11,000 worth of sales, it's still a lot of stock that I told you to stay away from. And yeah, from my perspective, right? So like I said last week, I want to get down to 500 listings, something manageable, a lot sell through quite quickly, which books traditionally aren't. Um, and I have sold manga before. And like I said in previous videos, I was the top seller of manga in Australia for a very long time. Um, used manga, that is. So I know what the, the sell through Reddit and books and all these different things. So I'm actually speaking from someone that was a bookseller in that capacity. So I'm not just saying, hey, look, I picked up three goosebumps. I can't sell them. I hate books, full stop. These are different things you need to look into. By all means, please, please, please do your own research. Don't jump into different things on the basis of uh, what comments is, commenters are saying, what YouTube content creators are saying, all these different things. Now, I know I'm going around in circles, but anyway, um, I did pick up a couple of Nintendos today. Um, I need to get some power supplies. To, I've seen them working when I was there, so I just need to get the power supplies to do all those different things. So Facebook Marketplace is somewhere I'm looking more often. Um, also looking at probably importing stuff and basically seeing what, what the market is. And like I said in the, in the podcast coming out on Tuesday is that you really, really, really need to start knowing your products. You know, there's no problem with branching out. Um, however, 
basically go from that perspective. So yeah, really, 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 really learn your products. And hopefully, David, I've, I've answered your question. We've had a lot, little bit of a uh, <laughs> a lover's tip in that regard. So not having a go at David, and by all means, like I said, I'm more than happy for people to pick me up on something that I've said incorrectly or I've basically, you know, spoken out of turn or I've made a, a gross error in that respect. And by all means, I try and make sure that I speak as factual as I can and not basically lead you down the garden path. Because like I said, you know, I don't want to cause you financial stress. I don't want to cause you mental stress and all these different things. And on the flip side is that if you make statements in your comments, um, I'll leave them there by all means. Yeah, like I said, I don't delete comments unless they're threatening kids or otherwise that like we had previously. Um, however, be prepared to back it up because it's no different to saying that, yeah, I'm having a go at you for doing the same thing. But anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video and by all means, put in the comment section below what you would do if your, your stock was stolen. <laughs> anyway, have a good night and we'll see you next time. Bye.